Hey folks, Quill18 here, and we are continuing our Unity 3D tutorial on how to create meshes dynamically within Unity. So we've, we've already had to explore some pretty complex topics so far. Um, most of the new introduction is sort of like meshes and vector math and normals and textures and all this is mostly behind us. Now we're going to look at some of the, uh, the Unity kind of functions of how to handle mouse clicks, because what we want to do is we want to be able to click here, drag our mouse over here, release, and then have a road be built in, in that position. So what we need to do um, is we need to expand on our on mouse down function. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this code here, we're going to take all this stuff here and move it into a separate function. Uh, because generally speaking, you want functions to kind of do what they're called. All right, so on mouse down should handle the actual mouse click, and we should have this be called create road. Right? Lots, lots of little, little iterations. In fact, I'm not even tremendously happy that this function is so long. Generally speaking, I like to keep the, the functions a little bit smaller. Um, so what I might do is, you know, especially later on, because you're going to get more and more complicated sort of um, operations here. What you might do is break this out to do something like, um, you know, your vector three vertices is equal to something like um, make road vertices you know, and so on and so forth. So that would be a function call now, and then you would you would move some of these operations into these little sub-functions and just try to keep that kind of as, as organized and compartmentalized as possible. Um, but then, you know, that that's kind of a later down the road for when we get, when we make our big SimCity clone from scratch. <laughs> yeah. Um, so on mouse down, right? So on mouse down, create road. Well, that's good, that, that's a start. But what we really want to do, first of all, is let's, let's position the road, let's place the road where we have clicked the mouse. So how do we get that information? Well, it's a little weird because um, it always struck me as kind of funny that the on mouse down actually doesn't give you that information directly. Like, well, it knows that you clicked on the object, so why doesn't it also know the position instantly? There, there are reasons, I suppose. Um, but what we want to do is we want to figure it out. Now, it's, it's, it's a little funny because what we're doing is we are we are looking at the game world through a camera, right? So when we click somewhere, like where my mouse is now, um, you can think of it as we are really just clicking on on the view from the camera, right? This is a flat 2D camera render, and we are clicking at some position at the camera. This would be the top left corner, the I don't know zero zero zero, and this would be one one one. Or you know, if this screen is roughly I don't know 300 pixels by 300 pixels right now then, um, you know, r clicking right around here might be, you know, roughly, say, 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Again, it might start, the zero, zero point might be down here, but it, it doesn't really matter, right? And so what we want to do is we want to use, we know, we know our click coordinates based on where we are in the camera view, and we know what direction the camera is pointing forward. Well, we can use all that information, and we know the camera's projection and all these things. We can use all that information to shoot a ray out from the camera and find out where the camera position or where that ray intersects with our object in the game world. It, it feels a little bit weird, but there's, I mean, you master this and you can do all sorts of crazy cool things. So on mouse down, so we want to know where our, cl our click is. So we can use something. Um, so we've got our camera, that main, we can always, am I lying? Oh, I guess you can do uh, camera dot main. There we go. And I, I'm sure there's a difference between main and main camera. Um, and I should probably look that up before I try to make a tutorial. But hey, let's ignore that. That's fine. Um, so we've got our, our main camera. And do we do the ray here? Yeah. Screen point to ray is the function we're going to use. We, we know, again, we know where on the screen we have clicked. We want to convert that into a three-dimensional ray that shoots out from our camera, and we use this function to do it. So it wants a um, it wants a position, and well, what do we have? Well, we know we've got our input dot mouse position, which is a vector three. So we can feed it that, and this will return us a ray. And what we're going to do is we're going to go a debug log ray. I don't, uh, yeah. I feel like I haven't properly explained like why you would use this, but it's it's one of those most basic operations. If you ever you know you Google, oh, how do I get the position of a mouse click? This is the these are the directions you're going to get because this is the way that it's done. Uh, so if we hit play, and then I click, 
There we go. We've got we're getting some some information here about our ray. We've got an origin and a direction. And if we click around, the origin is always going to be the same. And in fact, if I click on the camera, um, you're going to see that the origin is basically the coordinates of the camera. It's off ever so slightly. And why is that? It's because I think it uses it's the near clipping plane. So it's at the, the same position of the camera, but off by like 0.3 because of the near clipping plane. And then the direction changes as we click through the mouse. Oh yeah, see, it doesn't respond to a click up here. Um, I feel like, hold on, let me check something. On mouse down, it feels like on mouse down really should have the mouse coordinates, but no, it really doesn't. And the thing is, a lot of times you won't actually use on mouse down. What you're instead going to do is in your update, and maybe I should have done it this way, but I like on mouse down. Um, in fact, we will be using the update routine later. So, um, in your update, you might do something like if input dot mouse button down, then you're going to do something, right? And in here, you literally don't know what has been clicked on at all, which is why you're going to be shooting the ray out here. Um, so the code is going to be in entirely the same, but we'll we'll keep it in here. So it is interesting to note that we are not responding to clicks in the sky which is fine because we only want to respond when we're actually clicking on the ground itself. So now we have a great uh, array that shoots out from the camera and we want to find out where it hits and to do that we need to do a collision test. Um, so collision test, very easy, you, you, you use the physics engine to do it and you have to feed it a certain amount of data. Now there's two ways we can do it. We can do physics dot um, raycast. So you're shooting a ray forward and it's going to be returning in this raycast hit info. It's going to re be returning information about what it has hit and where it hit. So we're going to be shooting a ray out forward. Now, the physics raycast will, will do a raycast against everything in the world, right? It will return anything or the first thing um, that it hits in the entire game world. And that's fine, but really we just want to test against our ground. We already know our ground's been clicked on, so we can probably make the test a little bit faster if we just use our personal collider and do a raycast against it. It's exactly the same, except not. Um, physics raycast can use a variety of parameters, right? So physics dot raycast, you can tell right away. So raycast can have up to 12 different configurations of parameters, right? So it can it has a bunch of optional things that you can feed or not feed in terms of um, so with the ray, you've got the ray in, the ray info out, the distance that you fire the ray at. So because you might not want to fire an infinite length long ray, maybe you only want to let people click on things within a, a hundred distance units. You can pass a layer mask, little things like that. Whereas in the collider version of the raycast. It has no optional parameters. It simply requires three things. It needs a ray in, it needs a raycast info holder to take the information out, and it needs a distance, which I actually found quite odd that it didn't have a, a default sort of um, handler in there, but that's okay. We can put something reasonable in there. So the first part is simple. It needs a ray. Well, we have a ray. That's great. The second thing is it needs some sort of hit info, and it is an out hit info. If you're working in JavaScript, you don't really need the out keyword, as I recall. But here, what we're doing is we're specifying that this is something that we're getting back. The function is going to be populating the hit info and giving it back to us. So we actually need, we need a raycast hit object, and we'll call it hit info. Right, I can call these things anything. But a raycast hit object called hit info, and we're going to populate in there. I think we have to do a new raycast hit and it needs a distance. And the distance we're going to give it is called mathf.infinity. It's just going to feed it the biggest possible number in the game system because we, we don't care how far away it is. We just we want to get a hit on the ground. We don't want to guess to say, oh, the furthest the player will ever be from the surface is a thousand units, and then someone moves the camera in a weird place, and now they're a thousand one units away, and they can't click on anything. Just feed it infinity, the biggest possible number that the game system can handle. And there we have it. Now. Why, you might say, is hit info, why can this not just be returned? Why can't we just go, you know, hit info equals that? Well, raycast, collider raycast actually returns a boolean, right? Collider.raycast. You can see 
it returns a boolean. That does show up in the video, right? Yes, good. It returns boolean because it returns true or false if anything got hit at all. Um, now, so normally what you do is you wrap this in an if. Technically, we don't have to do this right now because we know for a fact that this is going to be true because on mouse down fired and on mouse down only fires when our object actually gets clicked. But again, this would be much more appropriate in an update, right? Update if input dot mouse button down. So if the mouse button has been pushed down, then do a bunch of crap in here. And if the collider, if the ray cast actually hit our object, then create road. Basically what we've done here is replicated the on mouse down that we had before. This stuff here, um, all this stuff only runs if the mouse button has been pushed down at all. And this thing only runs if the mouse button click actually interacted with our object. And this is actually probably a better way of doing it because of various reasons. Um, and so we're, we're back to kind of where we were before. Are we? Let's, let's test. Let's find out. Um, get mouse button down takes, oh, takes an argument. Right, because we need to tell it which mouse button it is. And mouse button zero is our left mouse button. Yep, everything works exactly the way it did before. So why on earth would we go through all of this trouble to get where we just were? The reason is that hit info, hit info, has something called point in it. It's a vector three. That is the point that the ray cast hit our collider. And this will tell us where to put the road. Pretty awesome, yes? Okay, well, I don't know if it's awesome, but it sure as hell is important. Right, so let's, let's pass that to our create road. So create road now is going to have something called, I don't know, vector three. I guess this is the start of the road. Sure, all right, road start. All right, we can deal with that. So what, what does this mean? Well, it mostly means that our road transforms position. Like, because we could feed in coordinates here, right? That's fine. We could leave our actual road transform at 0, 0, 0, and just change where our vertices are. It's kind of ridiculous. Let's not do that. What we really want to do is simply set our position to be road start. I'm going to do it slightly differently, though, because I'm going to say road start plus this. Again, we're going to keep us 0 0.01 units above where the click actually happened, just to make sure there's no sort of weird intermingling. Actually, let's let's leave it out. Let's comment this out for a second and, and see what kind of behavior we get. Theoretically, if I click this, now it's going to appear where my mouse is. Well, sort of, but they're not visible except these are and what's going on, right? And like, can you see this sort of like hatched crisscrossy thing? It's because they're literally one on top of another and except for rounding errors, like it's the rounding errors in the floating point numbers that determines whether you can see the mesh or not, right? That's all. Approximation errors choose one over the other. That's why you add just a tiny little boost and it doesn't have to be much, right? I could have added like a ton more zeros here. Boom, 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 boom. There is a precision thing that at some point it's, it's still gonna screw up. Apparently this is, this is actually too close, right? So there, there's, depending on various render settings and things and, and magic and, and things, there, there's magic numbers. But I find that the 0 0.01 uh, works, first of all, it works all the time. Um, and it's very, very difficult to ever be in a situation where you will tell that there's a bit of a gap. Like, I can't even get an angle over here where you can actually physically see the difference between one and another. It's not impossible. And technically, if the road segments cast shadows, you might get a slight drop shadow, which brings us to an interesting point. Hey, uh, let's, let's not have the roads cast shadows. Well, how are we gonna do that? It's gonna be our next iteration here. So in a road, in our mesh renderer, we've got cast shadows. So we'd wanna turn off the cast shadows. You could still receive shadows, that would be fine, but we don't want to cast shadows. So how do we turn that off? Well, we know we've got our mesh renderer over here. So we should be able to do mesh renderer dot cast shadows equals false. So now when we generate our roads, they will no longer cast shadows. And if we were in a game which had real time shadows, then this would no longer do that. In fact, it's less of a concern about weird like 
sort of graphical artifacting and more of a factor of like optimization. You should not be calculating shadows on these roads because they'll never have useful shadows. So let's save some CPU power, right? Or GPU power or something like that. Um, and, and, and so that's fine. But I, I don't like setting all these things in here. One of the great things about Unity is the ability to modify all this stuff in the editor, right? We don't want to be going back to the program code all the time for some of these things and, and changing materials and doing various things. Is there a way that we can make use of the editor a little bit more sanely to sort of be able to define our objects in here as opposed to only in code? Yes. And we're going to do that by creating an actual prefab for our robot object. And that will be the subject of our next video. See you in a moment.